there's a, a lovely transition that makes it easy for people to understand. It's like crypto is the best performing asset in the world for three years, and then it's the worst for one year. That first year is known as crypto spring. Sometimes it can be a bit choppy. It could be like spring. Some days it rains, some days it's sunny, but every day it gets a bit warmer. We had a pretty decent crypto spring. I mean, Bitcoin was up 150%. Then we started and we're in the process of transitioning to crypto summer. And crypto summer is when you start hitting all-time highs and things start going bananas. And we're very close to that now. You know, we've got to the all-time high in Bitcoin and we've been messing around. So whether by the time this video comes out or not, it's broken out or it hasn't, we don't know. It doesn't really matter. You know, it's pretty standard to have a chop around for a bit. Then fireworks happen. And really the fireworks truly happen when altcoin season comes. And that comes in crypto summer. And we're starting to see the first signs of that. It's been meme coin season for a while now. And I think it will drag, you know, the big memes like Doge up. And before you know it, even everybody, I, I find it amusing, everybody is writing off Ethereum right now. And exactly the same happened in 2020. In 2020, Ethereum was underperforming Bitcoin in spring, as it always does. Then it started basing. And then by the end of the year, it just never stopped outperforming. And I think we're in a similar kind of pattern. And that's typical of altcoin season. During crypto spring, the market experiences fluctuations. Some days it feels like setbacks with sudden drops, while other days we see promising climbs. This period is usually unpredictable, but generally trends upwards, setting the stage for the more explosive growth of crypto summer. Here, historical highs are often reached, and the market truly starts to heat up, pushing even the lesser-known altcoins into the spotlight. Interestingly, Raoul points out the cyclical resilience of Ethereum, often underestimated in its early stages each cycle, yet consistently outperforming expectations by year-end. This pattern is not just a fluke, but a repeated observation that seasoned investors watch closely. Let's delve deeper into what drives these seasonal shifts in the crypto world and how understanding these patterns can help you make more informed investment decisions. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a like to stay updated with our latest insights. 60 to 80% of all Bitcoin holders don't sell, they just hold. There's actually quite limited supply around. So when you add in a kind of macro bull market, it tends to then tilt the supply-demand imbalance wildly in favor of demand. Not enough supply, too much demand. Add the ETF in, and that adds more FOMO. It's easier for people to get in. And before you know it, you start building this banana zone cycle. So the halving itself is a non-event. It's the signal that you're about to come into crypto summer, which happens to coincide with the presidential election years every time. And it also corresponds with what I call the everything code cycle, which is the debt refinancing cycle, which is the macro cycle. They're all the same thing. So you get this kind of powerful dynamic of politicians giving out free candy because they're going into an election stimulus. You tend to have a liquidity cycle because of the business cycle, because they have to refinance the debts of the governments. And you tend to have the Bitcoin halving, which is a reduction in supply. And that's why these periods get really quite exciting. If slash when the Federal Reserve cuts rates for the first time in years later this year, what will that mean for crypto? I think it's been anticipated by the markets, but it just at top level, if you think of most people who've got credit card debts or mortgages or interest payments on cars, it just makes everybody's life a little bit easier. And if you've got a little bit more discretionary spending, you might be able to put it into the market. And so at the at the margin, it'll help. I mean, obviously, it would help a lot if rates went down to 2%. Are they going to get there or not? Certainly not this year. Maybe next year. Depends what happens to inflation. Depends what happens on a number of different levels. But really, it's not interest rates that actually drive the world. It's liquidity. Liquidity is the money that the, the central banks put into the system, often in conjunction with the government, to try and generate economic growth or drive markets. And um, we bottomed in liquidity, I think, again, last time we spoke, back in November 2020, uh, two, 2022. That was the bottom of the liquidity cycle, it happened to be the bottom of the crypto cycle and bottom of technology, because those are the forward-looking asset classes. 
And going forward, my work suggests that liquidity should continue to ease all the way into 2025. Um, so therefore, if we've got rising liquidity against this backdrop, it should be positive. Um, so I want to go forward thinking, maybe in a longer term time span, are you in the Michael Saylor camp that Bitcoin will most likely hit a million dollars? Yeah, so how I back this out is two different ways. One, I just look at the log chart of Bitcoin. That trend, you can extrapolate it. And somewhere around 2030, it'll be a million dollars. That sounds as ridiculous today as it did when I first bought it at $200 and I put a price projection of $100,000. I said it's actually going to a million, but I'm going to discount myself for being an idiot by 90%. So it cost $200. It could go to zero at that time, certainly, because that was 2013. But my price projections, 100,000. And people said, this is ridiculous. I said, it's the best macro trade of all time. So the million dollars doesn't seem that preposterous. The other way I back it out is when I look at the adoption of cryptocurrency. So you use as a proxy the number of active wallets. Now, we all know that's not a perfect proxy because people have multiple wallets. But you compare that to IP addresses for the internet, start them at both 5 million. Now, people have multiple IP addresses as well. So it's very similar. It's just directionally gives you an idea. Crypto is growing at twice the speed of the internet in terms of adoption. So it's the fastest adoption of any technology and any asset class the world has ever seen. So if we just assume that growth slows as it did with the internet, because once you get bigger and bigger numbers, it's hard to grow at such a rate. So it goes from, let's say, 175% a year where it's been trending and goes to 43% a year, which is what the internet did from year eight onwards. Well, crypto gets to a billion people by the end of next year, a billion active wallets, and it gets to 4 billion by 2030. Well, at 4 billion, the price will certainly be a million dollars. So it kind of backs out from the Adoption of the technology and of the log chart, because the log chart basically is the adoption of the technology. It's difficult to know what kind of cycle we're going to be dealing with. There's a school of thought that says it's a left translated cycle, which means it goes up fast early and then peaks early. Most would finish in 2025 in December. That's normally how these crypto cycles have finished. That, that third year would be the a December, November kind of period. So could it come earlier? And peter out this year. There's definitely a probability of that. What price would that be? I would say 200,000, something like that. And that would be, okay, that's gone very far, very fast. The most likely outcome is a standard bull market. Now, the last one we had, 2020, 2021, was actually a stunted cycle because really the final leg never happened. We had a huge final leg in 2017 and an even more enormous one in 2013. But last time around, we didn't get one, which caught everybody off surprise, including myself. So somewhere that would be, you know, Bitcoin gets to, let's say, 200 to 250,000 peaks somewhere between the summer and the end of the year. OK, that seems pretty reasonable. The other probability is that we have a full bubble cycle because now there's more access to it by the ETFs. There's more acceptance. There's more regulatory acceptance. Um, it captures more mind share. There's like 110 million Coinbase wallets and only about 10 million are active right now. So that number can go up dramatically. So we can see a huge participation um, and a final kind of belief that this is, this is it. That could happen. And in which case, then you would see an extension to maybe 400,000 plus in this cycle. Um, but I would give the short cycle and the bubble cycle roughly the same probabilities. I'm probably more earning to earning towards the bubble cycle, but let's call them both 20% probability and 60% for something normal. According to Raoul Pal, a significant portion of Bitcoin holders, about 60 to 80%, are long-term holders. They do not sell during downturns, creating a tight supply situation. When you combine this limited supply with increased demand, particularly during macroeconomic bullish phases, the market dynamics can lead to substantial price surges. Furthermore, events like the Bitcoin halving reduce the new supply entering the market, coinciding with cycles in political and economic environments, such as presidential elections and macroeconomic cycles. 
these elements collectively create fertile ground for what Raoul refers to as the banana zone of wild market rallies. The anticipation of regulatory changes, such as the introduction of a Bitcoin ETF, adds another layer of complexity and excitement. This facilitates easier market entry for new investors, potentially escalating the demand side of the equation dramatically. By understanding these intertwined factors, investors can better anticipate market movements and make strategic decisions, rather than relying on speculation alone. This informed approach to investment in cryptocurrencies can significantly affect the outcomes of one's investment portfolio during various phases of the crypto seasons.